December 1941, war came to the Pacific. New Zealand, key point in a new battle area, prepared defences. The Royal New Zealand Air Force quietly and efficiently set to work. Planes were made ready, camouflaged and guarded, ready for coastal defence. With the object of clearing the seas and occupying every strategic base, Japan had struck, pouring down through China, Malay, the East Indies, and out into the Pacific. To isolate and conquer was her plan. Pacific Islands, Australia and New Zealand stood across her path. War had come almost to our very shores. As fighter planes were warming up, new aerodromes were being built as fast as land could be cleared. But the RNZAF prepared to do more than defend New Zealand at home. On one of our northern air stations in the grey light of an early morning, the first Pacific operational squadron of the RNZAF stood ready to take off. Their destination, somewhere in the Pacific. Beneath these clouds, across Pacific waters, run vital lines of communication. The task was, and still is, to hold a highway between New Zealand, Australia and America, the bridge of supplies for the transport of men and materials of war. This required the building of island bases. Here at Espirito Santo, where the New Zealand squadron was to make its first camp, the base was already under construction. This island, the largest in the New Hebrides, is the most southerly point on which Japanese bombs have fallen. In safety, a flying fortress can roar down the great bomber strip carved out of the jungle. And into the jungle went the New Zealanders to build their first camp. They slashed at the trees with knives and bayonets, worked at speed in the clammy, enervating heat of a hundred degrees in the shade. This was their first real taste of one aspect of war in the Pacific. It's no picnic in this heat, where a man's resistance is measured against the temperature 
and against the possibilities of fever, dysentery, and malaria. And there are always jets. Planes must be overhauled and equipment assembled. For running repairs, they built their own workshops. Despite the heat, maintenance work on the planes must go on. The health of the men must also be maintained. At the hospital, fully equipped for every emergency, the men undergo regular medical examination. The standard of fitness demanded by the Air Force now proves its worth. It took planning to establish our island bases, planning the transport and organization of materials needed for camps as well as aerodromes. Living conditions must be good for men whose lives depend on their nerves, whose fighting will depend on the skill of hands and brains. A freezing chamber helps to solve the food storage problem, but as usual, someone has to do the daily chores. sorts of surprises in life on a Pacific island.